Good morning, this is Mark here with Supercharger Wellness. Coming to you today to talk about spirituality. Now, what I'm gonna talk about is spirituality, not religion. See, there are very two distinct entities. People who are spiritual say that religion is for people who are scared of going to hell. And spirituality is for people who have already been to hell. It's an interesting concept. Now, I grew up going to uh, Catholic school, as many of us did in this area. I went to uh, St. Anne's and St. Francis um, High School, St. Francis High School. And I had to go through all of the religion classes and um, church services and sacraments and all that stuff that is rammed down our throats um, through the Catholic school board, through the system, as a part of our, uh, our education or indoctrination. And uh, I hated it. I couldn't stand it, you know? So I don't want to offend anybody, because to each their own. If religion's your thing, and that's what helps you get through life, and that's what makes you a stronger person, and you utilize that to help other people and uh, create benefit and value for yourself and your life and your family, then all the power to you. I think that's great. But for me, I did not like it. I don't like being told what to do. I don't like being told when to sit, when to stand, when to kneel. I don't like singing songs and chanting. I don't like it. I don't like not one bit of it. You know, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I don't like about it either. So I chose to um, disassociate myself from that. And I was brought up with it, you know, I, I, not just in school. Um, my family, um, my grandmother, who is a, a freaking saint and, you know, my favorite woman on the entire planet who passed away about um, eight years ago or so. And uh, man, I miss her. She was like really Catholic, you know, like she went to, to church like two or three times a week. Like we used to go every single Sunday to St. Julius Church and sit in the back pew in the same spot every single week and do the whole thing. And then we go to her house every Sunday. And that was our routine when we were growing up. And uh, I really liked that, you know, and that that part of of the process I really enjoyed because it was time with grandma and it was... Uh, Ooh, emotional. And it was um, it was an enjoyable experience because I loved hanging out with my grandma. So we did that like every week. And um, that was great. But the stuff that in the school and all the stuff we had to learn and religion and all this, man, I just thought like there's so many more things that I could be learning with this time that they're making us do this religion course. And I, it was just, I thought it was nonsense. Anyways, that's just my opinion. But, you know, it was in it was in my in the back of my mind that, you know, I was brought up with this religious kind of upbringing with all the sacraments and all these things that, that you have to do as a Catholic. And I kind of had this like background of God. And, you know, there was moments, I guess, where you kind of feel the presence of something when you're when you're doing that. But for most of the time, I, was, I felt very disassociated from it. And um it wasn't until um, I had some serious hardship in my life that I was able to find something greater than myself. And um, for me, it was easy to ask for help, um, to pray to something, some something God or whatever you want to call it, universal consciousness, creator, guy up in the sky, whatever you want to call it. I was, it was easy for me to reach out and pray. For, for something to help me when I was down and out. And that, at that, it was at that point where, you know, I changed, I changed the way that I was thinking because I was very, very anti, very negative. Um, and everything in life, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, I was a very negative person. And uh, anything that I didn't like was, I turned, a th I turned a thumb up to it and I said, screw this. And it wasn't only that I, that I, that I let it go and stopped stop utilizing it or stop believing in it. I had a hate on for it. So I was like, I was full of contempt, full of anger, full of hatred. 
toward like society, toward you know organized religion, toward um, capitalism and corporations and all these kinds of things. Like I was like one of those crazy left wing Antifa cucks almost, except without the anarchy. And uh, I was very, I was almost like a socialist at one point because I was just so dumb and 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 teenaged and and I had no freaking clue how the world worked or, you know, as I've become older, I've become more conservative and more, more aware of what's going on. And, and, uh, my political ideologies have changed and my, um, my religious affiliations have changed. I'm not a, I'm not religious. I don't go to church. I don't, I don't abide by any doctrine by any means, but I have developed through, through those decisions that I made through those, that hatred and that anger and that negativity that I, that I held on to, um, brought me to a very dark place. You know, it's like God, when you turn your back on God, it seems to me that life doesn't go the right way a lot of the time. You make decisions based on your own will and your own power that don't always turn out the best. And you know what? Sometimes some suffering might be involved before you come to the realization for yourself that that's not the way to live. And it wasn't until I bottomed out and I hit a really, really low spot in my life that I finally, like, basically was told, like, you have, like, one of two decisions here. You can either keep doing what you're doing and keep getting what you're getting, or you can do something different and maybe try these, these things right here I'm going to give you. And you might be able to, just maybe, there's a small percentage of success, but just maybe you'll be able to, you'll be able to turn it around and change your life. And I was like, well, just maybe is enough because I don't want to live this way no more, so... You know, I'm going to try this. And I did. I tried. And um, I don't know if it was immediate or what it was, but I finally decided that I was going to get on my knees and ask for help because I didn't know anymore. I didn't know. I couldn't trust my own decisions. Things were not working out in my favor. I had gotten myself to the lowest point that i ever been in my life. And I had turned my back on, on any sort of spiritual guidance. And once I became open-minded and willing to put to do the things that you know a lot of people don't want to do very uncomfortable things like like prayer meditation getting on your knees asking for help from some god that you don't really believe in that you don't really understand that you don't really want to pray to um you know i, I used to think that i was god that's the way i used to thought think you know and uh, that didn't work out so well for me so when i started to do that something started to change i don't know what it was my thoughts became clearer. My direction became more apparent. I had some hope and some faith. And uh, that led me through a path that allowed me to improve my life drastically. Allowed me to change my circumstances, change my associations, change my friends, change my habits, and, and therefore change my life. And it was that was basically, I came to the fork in the road. And spirituality was what separated me from going on the road that I was headed, which would have been probably certain death, and the road I'm on now. And it's very interesting. I started reading some books, um, different books by different authors. Uh, Wayne Dyer was very instrumental in, uh, in giving me the insight that I needed to kind of find what it was that I believed because at first I didn't have a clue. I was just going through the motions. I didn't know what it was. I just did it. And it, something worked because God doesn't discriminate. And that's why another reason why I don't like religion is because every one of these religions seems to think that they're the right religion and everybody else is wrong and everybody else is going to hell. Well, I'm sorry, but if there's one universal consciousness and one universal God, he doesn't give a shit what doctrine you're in. I don't understand all these people fighting over, over religion. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. It's one humanity, one race, one earth, one universe, one God. Hello? It just makes sense. So whatever it is, it's definitely there, and it doesn't give a shit which book you read. So, you know, I, I've, I've very much gravitated to the open-minded concept of spiritual guidance, of universal consciousness, of intention, of manifestation, all these, all these kinds of principles that um, I put into, pl into place in my life. And I'm by no means a freaking guru. I'm learning. And uh, I just know that something's working and I have faith that something is, something's in my corner and, and showing me the way. And um, that's huge for me. 
It's absolutely instrumental in my success. And uh, Wayne Dyer, uh, where's that book? Sacred Self. Um, I don't know where it is. Anyways, that book changed my life. That book gave me perspective and uh, allowed me to kind of see things from a different angle and a different light and put different things into practice that really, really opened my eyes. And I remember reading, I was so immersed. I don't know if you guys, you ever read a book and you're, you're so immersed in what you're reading that you literally go into this like zone. And I just remember lying in my bed in Kitchener when I was out at university. And um, I, was reading the, I was reading the book and it, I just was reading and reading and reading. And I came to this point in the, bo in the book that it did something to me. And I started to have this deeper level of understanding and it was almost like an elevation. Like, like my mind started to just like vibrate with this frequency that I just it was like, whoa, it was like, I don't know how to explain it. It was very, very spiritual. And it was like something that I had never felt in my entire life. And I, I knew at that point that this was something special. That this was, this book had done something to me. This book had, it was like an epiphany. It was like I seen, I seen things from a, in a light that I had never seen them before. And it was just like a big, like an aha moment. And um, I've been trying to find that aha moment ever since. <laughs> and it just, yeah, it just, I can't really explain it, but you know, um, he was very instrumental. And from that point on, like I think that was one of the first books that I had from him. And I went on a Wayne Dyer tirade. You know, I read everything that he had. I watched every video that he had. Um, he has some really cool stuff on YouTube, too, if you're not a reader. Um, really, really interesting stuff. And it's just universal, universal principles that apply to humanity and apply to spirituality. And like I said, like spirituality is something that you can have. It's just an, being in tune with your surroundings, being in tune with, the, with nature, the environment, other people. And I have discovered some things about myself on this path that I didn't know before. And um, being an empath, and that is something that's always been with me. And it's caused me a lot of anxiety, actually, because I would go into a situation that was either dangerous or around bad people. And I would feel this sense of impending doom. I would feel this negative vibe, this energy that was surrounding me. And it was like this fight or flight response. And nothing had even happened. It was just the circumstance. And I don't know if any of you feel that way, but I'd be, in, I'd be in a place that I knew I wasn't supposed to be in with people that I wasn't supposed to be around. And I would be like on edge, like, got to get out of here. got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And that's, it's the same goes when I'm around people who have, are feeling different emotions. If people are sad or, in a, or going through something, I can sense it without even, without even hearing what they have to say. I already know. It's really, really interesting. And even over the computer, I can feel it sometimes in the way that people respond through Messenger and stuff. I can tell what kind of mood you're in a lot of the time. It's really, really strange. And same goes for, for happiness. And I, what empath is, is that you can feel what, what other people are feeling and, and you understand that either they're going through a difficult time or things are going well for them. And you, you, not only that, but you internalize the feeling. You internalize their, their, their uh, emotional frequency. So I have to be around good people and positive people because if I'm around negative people and bad people, I take on their negativity and their and their their bad energies, and that's just uh, that's just the way I am. I've always been that way, and I think uh, since I've been aware of that, I've been able to make decisions to be around people that are you know better influences and and happier, more productive, fruitful people, and that has in turn in turn benefited me moving forward. So. That's just something that I, I came in, into, into the knowledge of through, through my spiritual quest, through spiritual guidance. And um, the gym has been something that's always been a spiritual experience for me. It's been a, a form of meditation, if you will. I'm not talking about the kind of meditation where you're like, hum, with your legs crossed and, and candles and music and whatever. You know, that's a form of meditation. There are many different forms of meditation. Meditation is basically anything that can um, clear your mind of intrusive thoughts. Anything that can allow you to focus in on one thing and one thing only for a period of time so that you can flush out all the distractions of your life and, and, and hone in on one thing. And the gym and something about the blood flow and the endorphins and, and everything that's, that happens when you get a pump and you're, you're pumping weights has been 
a, a meditation practice for me and a spiritual experience. And I think that's probably part of the reason why I got so, so, uh, so drawn to it and so addicted to it is, um, it feels good. It feels good. And it's a distraction. It's like therapy, man. So all these things have been very, very paramount in my life. And you know, I'm by no means perfect, but when I'm doing the right thing, I tend to feel right. And when I'm doing the wrong thing, I tend to know that I'm doing the wrong thing. And I, the thing is that self-awareness today is, is absolutely 100% important in knowing when to deviate from your current course. I'm able to pick or understand when I'm doing something that's wrong and immediately correct it. Whereas before when I was younger, I would be doing stuff that's wrong and I would just go with it. I would just go with it and I would just go with it. And it would eventually snowball into this big thing that, um, you know, became uncontrollable. So that's come with age, that's come with maturity and that's come with practice, but it's a gift to be able to uh, pick and choose your, your course of action and understand consequences and understand what's right and what's wrong for you and move in the right direction. And I keep seeing these recurring numbers. It's synchronicity is one of the concepts in, in Dyer's um, spiritual teachings. It's, um, it's the things that we call coincidences, the things that line up that are just too, too coincidental to be, you know, by accident. That's, that's a synchronicity. And there's a thing with recurring numbers. And I keep seeing like yesterday, it happened like eight times. I would see like 11, 11. And then like, I look at the clock and it was like 222. And I look at the clock and it was like 444. And then it was like, weird, it just kept happening. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, it just kept happening, 744. You know, last night I seen 1111 at night again. It just it happened like eight times yesterday where the, not, the numbers on the clock kept being recurring numbers. And there's some, some concept out there, or theory out there that recurring numbers have something to do with you being on the right track and on your intention and purpose. And there's something with guardian angels. I don't really know 100%, but um, it means you're on the right track. It means you're doing the right thing. So if you're seeing recurring numbers in your life a lot, keep following your path and keep doing what you're doing. And don't let anybody tell you any different. That being said, I'm ranting. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Please hit like and subscribe to the channel. Mark, Mark Boney on Facebook. I also have the business page up and running and on Instagram it is Supercharge Wellness. I will continue to post. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to repost, like and subscribe and let's get supercharged.